One of the benefits of television is the opportunity to develop and flesh out these characters. And with each new episode, we learn more about Red Bill and how the loss of his mother led him to where he is in present day. Halfway through the season, you know, we were able to see him in a different light. And you handle that with so much nuance. As an actor, how did you create the space for yourself to dive into that arc? Um, well, firstly, thank you. Um... But I think, yeah, I mean, I start, I have to start, the I start at the beginning. So I start with who made this character, what made this character the character that he is when we meet him. And that's, you know, the obvious that he lost his mother at a young age. I have to go to my own experience. I'm, I'm very attached to my mother. I'm a bit of a mum's boy. And I used to have recurring nightmares about losing my mum when I was a kid. So that was kind of, that, that kind of, that, that sense of potential loss or trauma I kind of drew on and, and then I imagined if it became real and, and how that could have manifested itself and grow and, and, and become something very nasty. Cause obviously, you know, he deal, didn't deal with it in a very good way. You know, he, he's yeah. clearly <laughs> being very unhappy when we first meet him. And then I guess that the challenge was to really like hold, like I, I think as an actor, I, I can, I, I, have, I have a tendency, I, I, I tendency to lean into the vulnerability and you know, I find that kind mm -hmm. of like easy place for me to go. So the, the real challenge actually was like holding back, you know, I, rather than going, wanting to show everything that's going on underneath this character at the very beginning, you know, I had to like, had to lock it away. You know, he's this tight bottle where the pressure's like building up. And then I think it, it, it it's a pleasure for the audience later on as, you know, one of my favorite parts in the show is, you know, in series one is, is when he sort of goes into the Red Lantern and he suddenly starts playing Chopin. I think he's playing Chopin, I think that's who he plays. And it's suddenly just that like you see him in this completely different light, you know, you, you see that they're, you know, in my head, I can imagine he feels like he sat there playing. You know, I, I imagine that he used to play piano with his mother, that mm. she sat there next to him and it's it, it, it kind of was moving for me. And, you know, and then even just feeling the softness of sort of a place that had, that was inhabited, inhabited by women or, you know, even just the sort of perfume in that place that brought him back. I think he's lived in such a, he's lived such a desolate, like unhappy life for so many years now on this sort of very thankless task of trying to find his mother's killer that it, it, it was as an actor it was a pleasure to then start dripping this this softness and sensitivity back into his character yeah and this is a role unlike any that you've done before which is one of the reasons why you were attracted to this project did anything surprise you about the overall experience what was the biggest takeaway that you learned about yourself and your craft um i think for me maybe it was like the still stillness like appreciating stillness is something I took away, which was something that this character really demanded. And I think it's something that I, that I will take on forward, you know, I, I'm quite a fidgety person. And I think that can be, you know, you know, when you're on stage, you realize that it, acting with your whole, how important acting with your whole body is and stuff, mm -hmm. but also what power can be brought from, 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 from staying still, you know? So that was something I, I'll take away from this, you know, other challenges from this role is that we just shot six days a week for almost six months in, temperatures of over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we shot in Spain, Italy, and in, in the Sahara Desert in Morocco. So there, there were many challenges phys physically. I feel like the, the landscape is a character in the show and, and it very yeah. much beat us up at times. Um, but that was, that was kind of what made the whole thing so fulfilling and brought us all together. With this being such a departure for you, was there a scene or episode in particular that you were really excited for your fans to see? Um, I was excited for the well, I was excited for the scenes between Dominic and I. He's a very good friend of mine, yeah. uh, and we have a very funny relation in real life. We're best, you know. He's he's one of my great friends, but we know how to wind each other up. And these characters obviously go at each other, so I was excited to let that play out uh, on and off screen. Um, you know, and I also I, I I very much enjoyed working with Aidan Gillen, being like trussed up and beaten up. That was it was quite full on and being hung upside down all day and for days on end and. Um, other than live maggots and just like literally, you know, having rope burns and stuff. But I don't know, I just felt, it felt very, I don't know, it felt alive and I felt very present. It was, it, it, it was a good time. It was great, it was just great, just great people to work opposite really, basically. Perfect segue to this next question, but you and Dominic have been childhood friends. How did that prior trust and comfortability lend itself to the choices that you made when approaching the dynamic between your two characters? And what's something that fans would be surprised to learn about him? Uh, um, wait, that's two questions there. So remember, <laughs> um, 
what did so what did our what did our relationship bring to like the working process i think it was just that trust it was yeah. it was being able to be there for each other you know when you're working material trying to things that don't work trying to figure them out you know very many nights would be up at night trying to figure a scene out or make make a beat make sense or trying to draw stuff from the material um so we, were, we had each other's back very much in that we very much had each other's back on set we'd push each other but we'd also be there and it was it was just a very supportive relationship what are the what are the things that people may not know about dominic he he loves his he loves 80s music he loves advertising jingles so often he, he and yeah he loves he, you know he loves that he'd just be sitting you know whatever time at night like late at night when we've been up drinking and having fun and he's like he'll start singing all these jingles from the 80s like what what and he's like <laughs> What, what ad is this? What ad is So he, he loves like 80s retro stuff, something which is kind of very odd and bizarre, but he's very, he's a very funny man. And he's, he has me in stitches the whole time. And also he's an extremely good photographer, which you may know if you follow his Instagram, it's yeah. full of photos. So he, yeah, he, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a laugh dom. He's, he's a very, very funny, kind, loving personality, but he's a big personality for sure. He takes up yeah. space. <laughs> you, you've been a part of so many incredible projects and we often don't see you play the same character twice. And you've been part of this industry for quite some time now. As you've grown in this industry, how has that changed the vetting process for the roles and projects that you want to be a part of? I think, um, yeah, I try and I try and I've always, as you said, from the very beginning, I've played a, a variety of different characters. I don't if you, if you follow if you follow if you look at pictures of each one, then they all look very different. They yeah. sound they're, they're different genres. Um, I mean, part of it has been trying to follow and work with great filmmakers. You know, I have the pleasure of working with the Wachowskis, Darren Aronofsky, Terence Malick, now Michael Winterbottom. You know, uh, I, I've always tried to work with great filmmakers. Um, I've always tried to push myself, you know, Richard Madden, a great friend of mine said to me, I remember, uh, you know, almost 10 years ago now, we did our, I played Boy George and he played opposite me in that. And I remember him saying, Doug, do always do what you think you're not good enough to do, push yourself. So I've always mm -hmm. tried to live by that a bit. And also there's also an element of just take, you know, do, just taking the best job you can at the time. You know, you're, there's always, you know, it, wherever you are in your career, even Matt and Connie is probably going up against DiCaprio for roles or vying for the right script. You know, we're all on a different like, like rung of where we are in our career. And it's partly just taking the best job you can, you can get or you can like at the time, because, you know, the really good scripts are hotly contested. So you've just got to take, do the, do, you know, do the best jobs you can at the time, really just work hard, try and create interesting stories and, and be fortunate enough to work with great filmmakers. And I think that's, that's all you can do and try and keep a, work-life balance and remember what it is to be a real person rather than just get lost in in a constant you know wheel of productions because then you, you sort of lose what it is to be able to play a real person and you're mm. becoming a you know Grant, I got one final question for you. You've said being uh, a part of this project and starring in a western has been a childhood dream of yours. What's left on your bucket list? Um, I definitely want to do a comedy and I, there's a film that I'm attached to that's being put together that I'm going to shoot in Toronto hopefully in the beginning of next year or mid next year, which is a comedy which I'd like to do. I've done it a bit on stage, but I think that's something that, that would be fun. Um, I also would love to be in a big fantasy historical epic. I like, I love, mm. I love, um, love Lord of the Rings growing up watching that and, and Gladiator, those movies. I always wanted to go on, the, not that Gladiator's fantasy per se, but, um, I love those big adventure stories. I think there's, I would love to be in something like that, a comedy. Um, I would love to be in a Paul Thomas Anderson movie if he's watching this. Um, there's so many things I'd love to do, but I'm going to just take each, each job as it comes. And I'm about to start a film in a month with Michael Winterbottom, who's another great British auteur director. So um, I'm very excited for that challenge. And yeah, just take, a, take it each day as it comes.